Yesterday, when there were a lot of debates going on, including on this program, about uh, the calls for transparency, some of us said, you know what, the, 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 there shouldn't be any additional transparency. The DOJ has a policy. The policy is you do not speak about ongoing investigations. Recalling that James Comey violated that policy and it didn't do anybody any good. You yesterday came out and said, yes, it's true. There is a policy. But the fact that Donald Trump revealed the existence of this search, maybe could let Barrett Garland off the hook and open up some space for him to speak at a time when transparency would be good for the country. Talk a little bit about whether you, about the wisdom of this move in your view, because he did basically what you advised, uh, not in some detail, you didn't go into that much detail, but the general principle here was what you were, what you were advocating yesterday. Well, I won't give myself that much credit because I, you know, I think um, that uh, Merrick Garland did certainly, as um, Barb said, take advantage of the fact that um, it was the target of the search that actually made this public. Um, so that did give him that leeway. But then he did something very smart, which is he said, look, we speak through court filings and we, the Justice Department, are perfectly happy to and are moving to unseal it. And that actually was quite a brilliant move because it basically says to Donald Trump, put up or shut up. You know, you say that there's wrongdoing here. Well, you know what? Do you want the American public to see um, what we filed or not? And they gave him an opportunity. They gave him the, the motion that was filed. Um, so he now has an opportunity in the balls in his court to object um, and to keep from the public um, what it is that happened. So I think that was a really smart move. And it also is consistent with general Department of Justice policy, which is um, it will be that filing that actually does the bulk of the speaking. I do think there are a couple things that Merrick Garland said that if you listen very carefully were sort of his subtle ways of pushing back on things. Yeah. He did make reference to the fact that before they issued the search warrant, it's typical to try lesser means, which is confirmatory of the reporting that they had tried to do this by subpoena um, and that this was sort of a last effort that they were forced into um, by uh, Donald Trump's actions. So I suspect we're going to, um, with that affidavit we're gonna, that's unsealed, we'll learn more about it. Yep. And the other thing that I thought was interesting was that he talked about the fact that Donald Trump's attorney was on the premises. Right. Um, and that is a way of sort of cutting back on the idea that there was somehow planting of evidence. And, you know, that I always viewed as Donald Trump knows just how bad this situation is because he knows what he had there. And, right. you know, one of the defenses could be like, I didn't have it. The FBI put it there. Well, this is Merrick Garland saying, you know, your lawyer was present. So knock it off. Um, yeah, yes, he did it in obviously a much more, a much better way than I am saying right a now. Much more, a, much, a much less cable TV way and a much more Merrick Garland way. Andrew, I want to stick with you because I, I do want to unpack this a little bit. You, is it, you said a tweet um, uh, as soon as this came out and you, do, you made the point you made a second ago that he called Trump's bluff. For people who don't understand, the process is that the department has asked the court to unseal just step by step here. Now it is up to Donald Trump in a court filing, either to object or consent, correct? That's what you mean by calling his bluff. He can either basically now say, fine, show, well, I'm happy to have this out there in the public because so everyone can see how terrible it is, or he can object. And if he objects, it's then him, the former president, who's keeping transparency from happening. That's really the argument here. And that's what the bluff calling is that you're pointing out. Absolutely. That's right. Um, so, uh, you know, for, for the non-lawyers, that's exactly right. Um, it is the court that issued the uh, warrant and the court has in front of it uh, the warrant, the underlying affidavit. That's really the key, which is all of the evidence and every, the whole story about what happened that was submitted. That should be an FBI agent saying what happened under oath and the return. That is what was found uh, in the search. Um, and the court can unseal all of that. And so what Merrick Garland said is that they filed a motion with the court to unseal all, all of those things. Right. Um, but obviously, um, the former president has standing to be heard as to whether he thinks that's appropriate or not. I do think it puts the former president in a really tough position if he wants to object to it after, you know, you know, raising Sturm and Drang about um, you know, all of the wrongdoing when it's now the department that wants to be transparent about what happened here. 
But now the next step that we will hear is probably the court setting a deadline um, for uh, the former president to submit something. And then the court will decide the motion. So so um, I'll ask Barb this just because you're both equally qualified to answer it. And I, I want to let her get in here. Uh, how long do you think, Barb, it will be before we get to we get an answer on this, whether this is going to be unsealed or not? What kind of timeline do you imagine unfolding over the coming hours, minutes, days? I think it would be very quick. In fact, in most scenarios, when the government files a motion to unseal a search warrant, it's unopposed. And the judge does it as a matter of course, almost instantly, to just turn it over because it is the government who requested the sealing. There's a presumption that court documents are public and they're only sealed if there is a necessary law enforcement purpose for sealing it. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to have it on the public record before you go execute the search warrant, for example, because that might tip off the property owner that you're on your way and they might destroy evidence. Um, but once you've executed the search, if there's not an ongoing law enforcement reason to keep it sealed, typically it gets unsealed right away. In this instance, I suppose Donald Trump could have some interest in keeping it sealed, at least in the short term. If there is something in there, maybe personal information or right. other kinds of things that he would want to keep it. But right. I fully expect the judge to grant the, the motion to, un, to unseal and to do so very quickly. You know, maybe Barb, a few days to give Donald Trump's lawyers time to address it. But otherwise, be, I think very soon. Not going to be a few days. I don't mean to interrupt you, but we just got breaking news on this, which is that the court has, has actually said, has said how long they have. They have until three o'clock tomorrow. The president has to either object or consent. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, by three o'clock All tomorrow. Right, even so faster than we're, I we're moving on. We're moving on a fast track. Andrew Weissman looks happy with that. He's a big smile on his face. Um, you know, justice uh, denied uh, is, you know, whatever. Justice delayed is justice denied. Let's get to the let's get to it here. Find out what the, whether the president you call a bluff in poker. You find out pretty quick whether the what the outcome of that is. That's good. We're going to find out quickly one way or the other. Um, Katie, I want to ask you, um, before we get to the reporting, Andrew uh, talked about the fact that, that, that the New York Times, one of a couple of journalistic institutions right now, they're just killing it on this story uh, and, and advancing the ball very quickly. Before we had Merrick Garland come out today uh, and knew that he was going to come out, we thought we were going to spend a lot of time on this show re, re going over how much more we knew, how much more we know, know now than we knew 24 hours ago. Now there's this news that's taken up some of that space. But before I get to you breaking the news about uh, the Times breaking the news, you breaking the news about the subpoena that preceded the search warrant, which Andrew Weissman talked about. I just want to ask you whether at this hour, at this moment, at this minute, whether this what, what you know about the deliberations, if anything, the deliberations inside the DOJ that played out over the course of this day that led Merrick Garland to making uh, the statement that he made and taking the move that he took. I think that. I think the best way to think about the deliberations that would have led to this move is to contrast what happened today with what happened uh, under the previous administration when Donald Trump would attack the Justice Department. You saw that former Attorney General Jeff Sessions was largely silent and never defended the men and women of the Justice Department or the FBI, except on rare occasions, because in large part he was worried about losing his job. He himself was under threat by former President Donald Trump. You just saw how much power Trump had over the department. And then under Attorney General Barr, you also did not see a robust defense of the men and women of the department and the FBI. Here you're seeing something very different. And you cannot help but think that that was part of the calculation, which was that the FBI particularly, the men and women of the department, even the magistrate judge in this case has come under attack, that these people needed to be, the, the, these people's motives should not be questioned. And that it is up to the Attorney General who is responsible for the department, who has final say, the buck stops with him, to come out and make a statement in defense of these people and say, it was I, Attorney General Merrick Garland, who approved this. I will take ultimate responsibility, and now the world will see the document and decide for themselves whether or not I acted irresponsibly. I'm going to read the uh, the paperless order here, taking under advisement 18 motion as to sealed search warrant one. The United States shall immediately serve a copy of its motion on counsel for former President Trump. On or before 3 p.m. Eastern Time on August 12th, 2022, that is tomorrow. I'm not great sometimes with calendars, but that's when that is. The United States shall file a certificate of conferral advising whether former President Trump opposes the government's motion to unseal. It's signed by Magistrate Judge Bruce E. Reinhardt and entered into effect this date. Um, Andrew, what do you what do you imagine? I want to go back to ask you the question I just asked Katie. You know, it was notable. I thought, you know, Mayor Garland is normally a guy who's on time. 
You know, he's not this. He's a punctilious man. I think we all saw him showing up. They announced he was going to be coming out at 2.30. He did not come out at 2.30. He came out somewhat later, half an hour later. What do you imagine it was like inside the halls of DOJ? I know enough to know about what it was like during some of these discussions around Jim Comey. Chaos in the building. People running back and forth from the FBI building to DOJ. The, 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 the deputy attorney general, the attorney general conferring back and forth. All kinds of stuff happening. A lot of chaos there. Is that the way that you imagine things were playing out today and the normally kind of stayed and restrained world of Merrick Garland as he decided to to go ahead and do this thing that, as I said earlier, I'm certain he did not want to do. Well, I, I sort of break it down into um, sort of two components. I think that the big picture decision was whether they were going to move to unseal uh, the warrant and, and the underlying affidavit. And I think that probably was discussed um for a couple days um and i think that's the big picture i don't see that being something that would cause this last minute slight delay in his coming out then i think there's second component is the fly specking of exactly what he would say what he would say about um who spoke first and the fact that the department didn't speak but donald trump spoke um, the issue about um, that you typically do a search warrant after trying other things. I think all of those ways in which um, Merrick Garland was thinking, what can I say that is within my ethical norms and that I feel appropriate? I, I could see a lot of back and forth. Um, you know, this is what, what they say about, uh, you know, what is a camel? A camel is a horse designed by committee. And, you know, I could see, you know, this, what exactly he was going to say. There are a lot of probably cooks in, in that kitchen um, tinkering with it, which, um, you know, it came out just fine. And I think the, the key here is not the tea leaf reading on, the, on all of his words. It's going to be getting the um, actual uh, affidavit in support of the warrant. I think that's going to tell us, uh, you know, everything that we need to know uh, right. and have been asking for in the last few days. 